Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I'm going to be doing another what we eat in a week video, winter edition, February on the homestead. This video today is sponsored by Thrive Market. I've shared them on here before. I have been a happy Thrive Market customer for years now, probably five plus years. I love Thrive Market because I can get so many items that I can't get at my local country grocery store. If you live in maybe some more populated areas, you might be able to get some specialty ingredients that you desire for healthy cooking at your local grocery store. Me personally, I'm able to get most things, but there are just several pantry staple type of items that I can't find that I regularly just purchase from Thrive Market. Tomato products like Jovial's tomatoes, I love them. I also really love these fire roasted tomatoes. I have been using them in chilies and to make sauces, They're delicious. Coconut products like coconut flakes and shreds for my granola are also something. I get a lot of condiments, dried fruits. It's great because on Thrive Market, you're able to sort by your dietary preference. So if you need to be gluten-free or dairy-free, paleo, whatever it is you're looking for, you can add those filters, makes it really easy to shop. Personally, I've been shopping there so long, I usually just go back into my previous order and pick up the items that I normally get there, like gelatin, supplements, all the things I mentioned, and it's a easy shopping experience for my healthy and organic items that I can't find locally. Thrive Market is offering my viewers who are first-time customers 25% off their first order and a free gift if you join today at thrivemarket.com forward slash farmhouse on boom. On day one, I made meatball sandwiches on sourdough hoagie rolls. Essentially, I just made my normal sourdough artisan basic bread loaf. and then divided them into individual pieces that I rolled and made sort of small for a sub style. For this, I ended up using half freshly ground whole wheat flour and half unbleached all purpose to make it a little bit lighter than usual. Day two, I did chicken pot pie with einkorn biscuits. The recipe for einkorn biscuits is coming soon to my blog, so you can check the description box for when it is ready, it'll be there. I did not have any meat thawed, which that's usually my number one tip for having healthy meals without meal planning, is always keep a nine by 13 dish in your fridge with thawed meat. This just makes dinner super quick. You're always ready to cook something easy and some staples to go along with it. But I didn't have that this day. So I ended up cooking my chicken in the Instant Pot, which gets it done in about an hour if it's fully frozen. I recently purchased some organic chicken 
and I have several, so it's been in our diet more lately. We had been on beef for a while because I didn't have any, and now we do. I also didn't have any bone broth made, so I just used the liquid from the cooking the chicken in the Instant Pot for the bone broth component. Now, whenever I make a pot pie, I almost always make two. For the biscuits, I did use half all-purpose einkorn flour and then half freshly milled in my wheat mill. For the full recipe, again, on farmhouseonboon.com and here on YouTube, you can search Farmhouse on Boone chicken pot pie and the recipe will be there. Day three, I did steak burritos with homemade einkorn sourdough tortillas. Today, I made some homemade pickled onions. I got this idea from my friend Ashley Turner's cookbook, Restorative Kitchen. She shows how to make really easy, really fast pickled onions. And now I wanna have them on hand at all times because it gives you something that you can just pull out of the refrigerator at any time, add it for extra flavor. Now, I do like to ferment things, as you well know, but this is a way, if you don't have something made, this is quick. You just do apple cider vinegar, a little bit of coconut sugar, water, boil it, add it to the onions, let it cool, then it's done. So you could have it in very much a pinch, even if you didn't get ahead by fermenting something. So it's a great staple to have on hand. I have lots of steak because I order half a cow at a time and so I end up getting steak. And this is a really great way to serve it to kids because I slice it thin and then add it to burritos. I also rendered fat from the steak. So any steak I cut off the ribeyes, I put into a little pot, cooked it low and slow, strained off the fat, and that gave me a nice little jar of cooking fat with which to make my friend Ashley's white sauce. So this is from her new cookbook that she just sent me and I'm finding so many lovely things in there to make. This white sauce is really good to add to make burritos not so dry when you bake them in the oven, plus it's obviously really healthy. I 
I also did use Thrive Market coconut milk, which I have in my pantry. I keep that on hand for times whenever I don't have enough milk. So there are times when, you know, the goats didn't give enough or I didn't make it to milk pickup. And sometimes I like to use it whenever I am cooking milk. Like in this case, it renders all the benefits of the raw milk useless when you cook it. And so occasionally I use milk, but occasionally I do substitute coconut milk and that's what I did today. It was really, really great on the burritos. Great for if you're dairy free also. Day four, I did a butternut squash chili with venison. I just cut up some butternut squash, roasted it in the oven, made basic chili. I didn't have any black bean soaking. Again, I am one of those people that I have all of my tips for you, but I don't always get them done. So in a pinch, you can make black beans really fast in the Instant Pot, and that's what I end up doing most of the time, even though you definitely should soak them in something acidic like apple cider vinegar. I did not. I made my black beans in the Instant Pot. I ground some deer steaks with our meat grinder. Deer steaks are good on their own, but with kids, I do prefer to grind things just because it's easy and steak is really good. One of my best latest finds is to use these fire roasted tomatoes. They just kick the whole chili up like several notches, make it so much more delicious. It's easy to do. Of course, in the summer, you can fire roast your own tomatoes, but really perfect addition in the winter time when you don't have access to that, when you want to increase the flavor level. Also, if you wanna make the meal stretch, the einkorn pasta, for especially leftovers, when we have a leftover bowl of chili, we almost always make up a box of the einkorn pasta, toss it with the chili and some cheese, and it really stretches that chili further. Day five, I did a basic roasted chicken. I had one thawed. You have to for this type of recipe. I added more of my rendered fat that I did a few days prior, salt, pepper, herbs, and got a nice crispy bird. I served it with some freshly made hash browns. This is something we've been doing a lot lately. It's really fast. If you need to cook potatoes quickly, shredding them up, cooking them in some hot oil, giving them just about one flip on a nice preheated nonstick cast iron skillet makes for a delicious side dish. And of course, with just about every meal, I forgot to mention we serve it with some homemade sauerkraut for the probiotic benefits. Day six, I had some leftover chicken in the refrigerator from a lunch this last week um, and from the chicken the previous day. So I made some of my chicken wild rice soup. This is a recipe that is over on the Farmhouse on Boone blog. I haven't put it on here yet, so you can check it out there. It's creamy, delicious. I didn't get great footage because it was dark whenever I was dishing the soup up, but trust me when I say it's a soup you're going to want to make for your family.
On the final day, I made a sauce with the roasted tomatoes. Again, I just love these. and made a sourdough pizza. So my easy sourdough pizza crust, preheated skillet or pizza stone, sourdough starter, olive oil, salt, pepper, herbs, bake it, add goat cheese, mozzarella cheese, whatever, and a sauce from the roasted tomatoes. So good. Such an easy meal too, even if you don't have you know much on hand. All you have is some starter and some cheese and some either pre-made sauce or something that you can make sauce with and you'll have lunch or dinner in no time. All right, thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Make sure to visit thrivemarket.com forward slash farmhouse on moon to get 25% off your order and a free gift. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you love videos like this, I have an entire playlist of what we eat in a week. You can go back through and watch it. I cook through the seasons. There are a lot of things that I make repeatedly, but then there's always new things I'm learning in the kitchen, new things to add, new skills that make lunch and dinner a little bit more exciting, but also really simple and easy, and that's my goal. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse. Mm -hmm.